I feel like everybody has seen these white freestanding pipes that are buried in front yards and backyards everywhere. But few homeowners seem to really understand exactly what these pipes do or how important they are. So this week, I teamed up with Rob Graham, professional plumber in Wake in Johnston County's North Carolina. He walked me through a full discussion of what exactly these crucial pipes are for. And that's what we're talking about next on The Honest Carpenter Show. These standing pipes that you sometimes see poking out of our lawns are known as sewer cleanouts, And they basically exist for one reason, to prevent your house from flooding with sewage. See, sewer cleanouts are typically located in two places outside of your home. One will be within 12 to 18 inches of the foundation wall. The other will be in the easement out by the road. So essentially they're at either end of what's called your building sewer. The building sewer is the pipe that runs between your house and the sewer main in the street. It's responsible for getting the waste contents of all the other pipes in your house out to the city sewer line. So when you get a problem with this pipe, it will affect your entire house. And the biggest issue with the building sewer pipe is that we can't ever really see it. Much of your home's plumbing can be viewed from somewhere in the house. So when it has problems, we can find the problem and fix it. Even pipes hidden in walls create wet spots, letting us know that we have an issue. But the building sewer line in your yard is totally concealed. Often by the time we even realize it's having problems, it's too late. A total backup may flood your home with sewage and gray water, which is every homeowner's worst nightmare. And several things can cause these backups. The building sewer may have developed separations between pipe sections if it wasn't installed correctly. Or it could have sagged over time and possibly broken. When these things occur, tree roots begin seeking out the moisture that the pipe releases. They'll send spider roots into the pipe, filling it up. Or they'll squeeze the pipe from the outside, crushing it. And your sewer pipe doesn't even have to get broken to actually get clogged. Things like flushable wipes can clog it up, along with other household objects that get lost down drains. Grease is also a huge source of clogs, and that includes meat grease and the type of grease that comes from cooking starchy foods like pasta and potatoes. That stuff leaves a residue as well. Whatever the case, blockages can begin to form in the building sewer over time. Pretty soon, nothing flushed or drained can leave the house. So pressure builds up and it all comes back inside. A sewage flood in your house is a top level disaster. Typically, it will trigger an insurance claim, which can get complicated. The insurance company may require remediation, which involves replacing all flooring, portions of the wall, anything that gets touched with sewage. It's extremely expensive and very disruptive to your life and possibly even your health. Sewage backups should be avoided at all costs. Fortunately, this is why your cleanouts exist. They're here to provide quick access to your sewer line to find, fix, and prevent major backups. Qualified plumbers like Rob can determine the health of your sewer pipe by running a camera through it. By starting at the cleanout near the house, Rob sends a scope towards the roadside cleanout at the street, checking every linear inch for problems. He's looking for major obstructions, breaks in the line, and the overall health of the pipe. If the camera spots a bad section, he can then track the camera head using a locator, which scans for a radio signal coming from the scope. It's a pretty cool process. The locator sounds like this. If a problem is found in a spot, plumbers will sometimes then dig out the bad section of the pipe and replace it. In other cases, they'll recommend replacing the whole sewer line at once just to avoid a lot of short-term problems in the near future. Occasionally, temporary blockages can even be dealt with by snaking the line with a drain machine. This is another thing that is best done at the cleanout, though it can possibly be done through a drain beneath a removed toilet. And Rob is quick to point out that you shouldn't necessarily wait for problems to form to get your line scoped. He recommends scoping at least every two years. If you're running a house to tenants, you might want to scope more frequently because a sewage backup in a rental house can be even more costly to deal with. Also, just as important, if you're looking to buy a house, you might want to insist on having the sewer line scoped. It's not part of a routine home inspection, so again, there's no way to know the sewer's condition on a property unless you have it scoped by a plumber. Scoping will generally cost about $200 to $600, depending on how long your building sewer is and how easy it is to access. It is an investment, but it's one that can easily save you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars, shortly down the line. When Rob scopes a pipe, he wants to see a full, relatively clean circumference like this sewer in Raleigh. Pipe connections look good, no obvious dips or pulling water, no roots. But on this footage from another property for sale, he found too much sediment buildup in an old cast iron pipe and some pulling water. The client ended up passing on this house for this reason because it was probably going to be a ten dollars to $20,000 replacement in the very near future. And here are some other things Rob points out. Older houses may not have cleanouts because they weren't mandated by code until the late 70s. 
and some cleanouts may have been buried and hidden over time. It's really not a good idea to bury your cleanout. I know they don't look great, but burying them can lead to further damage or just more extensive cost when a plumber can't actually find it. Also, the roadside cleanout marks the boundary to which most plumbers can work. From that point on, the pipe becomes the sewer lateral, which then leads to the sewer main. If there are problems past the roadside cleanout, a public utility contractor has to be hired to work on it, but they are way more expensive. Typically, the city is responsible for handling this section of pipe, but lately, in some places, the city has been challenging this, trying to force the cost back onto the homeowner. Individual cases can be fought, but it's all the more reason to get your lines scoped out clear to the sewer main in the street, because you could be on the hook for damage to the lateral as well, and that's a big money repair. Anyways, that's a few quick things to know about sewer cleanouts. What did you think? Did this fill in some gaps? Do you have anything to say about them that I didn't mention? Please, let me hear about them down in the comments. I want to thank Rob Graham for helping me out with this video. He's a great plumber in the Wake and Johnston County area. I hope to team up with him again. And be sure to reach out to him if you live in these counties and you're in need of plumbing services. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming out soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.